And we are good to go. We are good to go. We are on the Bolt Publishing System version 2.0. How fitting. Version 2.0. This has just been updated. I've got everything sorted now. And we now have the Vinci 03 running alongside ChatGPT Turbo 3.5. There are some changes that have been made to the sheet and I've not had a chance to make a video updating you guys and explaining what some of these functions are. And there are still quite a few functions that I need to add. So these default functions are just me training the model in the back end. And if anybody wants to use those, they can. It might make things a bit easier. I'm at the moment, I'm just making a drop down. So when you type in equals G, you'll see all of these and you don't have to keep going back because it's going to get insane otherwise. So these are now our new default functions. And then this is what this was changed in the last update on February 28th. And now we have Turbo 3.5 integrated. These default functions are all still DaVinci 03. There are various reasons, but that language model is still the most powerful language model that we have access to. 3.5 has other capabilities. It's a lot faster and the way it understands the data allows us to do so much more with it. So I'm going to go into that in a moment. So let's say we are going to do GPT-3 custom five. I'm going to make a new sheet to keep things simple. And let's compare MacBook Pro versus MacBook Air. So we're doing a product comparison and GPC 3 custom five is compare these two products. Very simple. It's not going to do anything outstanding, but we can get this up. So GPT-3 custom five. And in this row, we're going to do Vinci and then chat. So this is just to show you the two of them running alongside each other. Okay. Now again, for the same one, we're going to just take the whole thing. We're going to do GPT-3 custom five, and we're just going to put new, and that's going to grab from the Turbo API. And let's see, let's look at the difference. Okay, that's the difference. We've got a list. We have some plain text subheadings. So we've got, it's broken it down with design, performance, battery life, display, price range, and a conclusion. So I've not asked it to write me a blog post or anything. I've just said, make the comparison. So we can do that again. We can actually see the speed. It did seem a bit faster before, um, but in any case, it wasn't long. It wasn't long. So let's, let's make another comparison. And we're just going to grab both of them and drag those down. So it's doing DaVinci and this one was doing Turbo. DaVinci was first. Turbo is again breaking it down, broken it down by performance and in terms of design when, oh, it's done it as well, but it's just a lot, it's a lot shorter. So I, but this one said as an AI language model, I do not have personal preference. That's not good, is it? <laughs> we didn't need it to say that, but that is a very basic prompt. There's nothing to this prompt. So you would never do that. So that might be, that might have something to do with it. But as you can see, it's just taken the time to go the extra mile and break things up a bit. I'm going to actually adjust it and see what happens. Let me just adjust this prompt. So compare these two products. Okay. Let's give that a swing and keep the same custom. And what we need to do is make this a bit more viewer friendly. So now we're going to do the exact same things. We're going to save these actually. Save these form formulas as text. So I'm going to grab the formula first so I don't have to go back. Save those. And now we're going to get it to do those again. And let's see what difference a slightly more detailed prompt will give us. There's no, the prompt doesn't have anything to do with tone. It's not a multi-level prompt. It's just 
going into more detail. Let's see if it's made a difference. It does look like it has. It's got battery life, ports, display. This one separated the two, which is good. And this one starts with the same kind of, as someone who has used both this one says, I've had the pleasure of using the MacBook Pro for a few months now. See, this is why I like DaVinci. <laughs> this is why I like DaVinci more because it's just better. It just is better. And I find chat GPT very repetitive. But as you can see, one, no errors. And it's given such a longer output. So it's given more details. But then there's no doubt in my mind that this information is very repetitive. It's used the same, it's used the same introduction as somebody who has spent, I think it done that again on the next one, as someone yet, yeah, as someone who's spent a considerable amount. This is what I mean when I say it's repetitive because these are completely different. It's not linked, these cells are not linked in any way. But with the same prompt, it's given a very similar sounding. Of course, I haven't told it what tone to write in, but this is an example of how not to prompt, basically. Because as someone who's used both the MacBook Pro and MacBook Air, as someone who's spent a considerable amount of time testing and test driving both the Volvo and Audi, it's very, very repetitive, very similar. Once you've seen enough of this, you know what you're looking for with AI. Again, same here. As an AI language model, blah, 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 blah. With DaVinci, it's done. I've had the pleasure of using the MacBook Pro for a few months now. And I must say, it's been incredibly, it's been an incredibly enjoyable experience. It has a sleek. So this is more true to human sounding text and conversation. And I've not even told it to do that. So this is a very basic prompt. I speak about multi-level prompts in the Topical Authority Accelerator and it really is the game changer when it comes to prompt writing and not just doing the bare minimum to get the information because yes, you'll get the information but it's going to look like this. It's going to look very generic. And then again, this the introduction or the way it talks is completely different. It's still first person but you can't see the pattern that you can in ChatGPT. So just on the quality of the language model itself, I'm all team DaVinci 003 until we move on to GPT-4. Once we move on to GPT-4, then we'll have some real power behind us and it's probably gonna have the capabilities of Turbo 3.5. So then the question is, what is the point of putting Turbo 3.5 in the sheet if it's not a better language model. There are so many more capabilities, more than I'm gonna dive into in this video because I've just, my mind's been blowing with the capabilities. DaVinci is definitely more powerful and better in terms of the quality of the output, but then Turbo 3.5 can do so much more. And one of the things I've mentioned in a tweet is the continuation of data. So I'm gonna create some first draft blog posts and I might get an error on DaVinci, I might not, but let's just see. And new. So this is DaVinci generating a first draft blog post and this is chat generating a first draft blog post. DaVinci gets a lot of errors and chat doesn't get as many errors. This is good because it's put it in HTML, but immediately this one has tried to grab it's tried to make a title out of this. So it's a MacBook Pro versus MacBook Air. And what you see here is it trying to continue this before we go on with that. So that is actually what the model's designed to do. It's designed to continue on from the point that you've made. So as you're typing and you just tell it to continue, it will do that. It reads what's before it and it continues. Chat is of course responding. So you tell it something, it responds. You tell it something, it responds. And now we've just got that in the sheet. So when it comes to generating with DaVinci, you have to put full stops at the end of things so it doesn't try to continue the disinformation or you have to clean that up. You have to save your values and then you've got to go through and clean all of those hanging sentences and stuff up. So that's one thing I do like it added H2s and I haven't told it to. So there's that. Let me just wrap this. But 
Let's look at the actual length of the output. I think Da Vinci's actually, I think it's actually done more. I need to put um, a word count in my sheet. That would be good. A word count. That's probably going to be quite easy to do as well. So this looks like it. It's not finished. I should have done it from an outline, but you can see one, two, three, four headings, and it's probably not finished. And this one's done introduction, portability, performance. It's done quite a few headings. And then it has a conclusion. Does it get to the end of that conclusion? I don't know. Oops, that's generating again. It's generating another one. You have to save your values. Once you save it, it saves it as a fixed value and it's not going to keep pulling from the API. So it's done it again now for some reason it's put it into HTML and it looks like it's not completed the article. The language model is limited to a certain amount of tokens and also it times out if it's trying to generate more and it's pulling from the API and the API is taking long, it will time out and you'll get an error, which is very common with DaVinci 003 in the sheet, which is why I expected it to throw an error, but it didn't. But in any case, both of these are not complete blog posts. So where ChatGPT really shines is we can continue from this incomplete blog post. I can simply write a prompt to say continue, and I'm going to use the chat model to do this. So I'm going to clear this away and I'm going to get it to continue from what it's been saying. I'm going to try that with DaVinci and I'm going to try that with chat. One's going to work and one's not. This one's all, this one has already not worked. As you can see, it, it's blank. It didn't even try. Let me try and do it again. Let's try it again. Nothing. It's like, I can't do what you're asking me to do, so stop asking me. This one is telling me that it was finished. So let me save the, this as text. Yeah, so this one's just trying to complete it with the end of the tag. So I'm actually going to throw that in there so it doesn't try that again. And uh, let's try and get it to do that again. There you go. So DaVinci won't continue. It won't be able to take the data if it's a full blog post and it's already, it already feels like it's maxed out. It's not going to read the data and then continue. That's something that seems to be exclusive to chat because that's the way chat GPT works. You'll talk to it and then it will do something and then you'll say, okay, you've not finished, continue or add this to it. And you can do that in the sheet. So if you do generate a first draft and you find that it's cut off or it's quite short, you can tell it to expand on this. You can tell it to rephrase. You can tell it to add a subheading that goes into detail about this. You can do pretty much everything you can do in ChatGPT in your sheet at scale. So that's the benefit of having this 3.5 turbo model. But again, when it comes to the bare comparison of the quality of the text, really good prompts and guided, DaVinci 03 is still so much better. But I think because of the cleanliness of the data and how chat manipulates the data, I think that's why it's still quite a powerful model to have alongside the Vinci 03 again until we have access to GPT-4. So I hope you followed along <laughs> with that explanation.